We are speaking about Yisoyed, and today I want to open up the Zoyar. Today is going to be the Zoyar day, as we go into the world of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, to the world of Yisoyed, the world of Tzadik Yisoyed Eilam. I want to tell you something from the Zoyar. So I'm reading a section here from the Zara Kodesh. The Zohar begins by quoting a Pasuk. Oftentimes, what will happen was the Zohar will quote something from the Torah and then explain, and this is what this really means. So, state in the Heilige Zohar HaKadosh, Ve'avram ha'yoyye. The Torah is speaking about that God promises that Abraham will become a great nation. Surely a great and wondrous nation. And Hashem is promising that the offspring of Avram Avinu, of Abraham, will be numerous, like the stars, will have an inheritance to the land, will have the bris, Bein Abbasarim. And this was all right before God was going to destroy Sodom. So the verse says, Avram Haya he will surely be. Okay? Pay attention to these words. Yie will be, surely will be, great. What's the gematria of Yie? A Yud, a He, a Yud, and a He. 30. 30, very good. So the Zara says, Yie be gematria shloishim. Yie is the numerical value of 30, because a Yud is 10 and a He is 5. If you add it all up, it's 30. So pay attention to that. That's going to come back. So the Zara will make a statement, and then teach us something, and then bring it back. So it says the Heilig Zoran, Zimna Chada Nofik Reb Shimon. There was one time that Reb Shimon went outside. It sounds like he never went outside. He was always shtagging, learning Torah. And there's one that, Pamachas, Zimna Chada. We see that language also in Pirkei Avos. Pamachas. Well, there was one time. Reb Shimon went out from the base Medrash, and you know what he saw? The Choma Alma, the Choshech, the Ophel, the Estatim, the And he saw that the whole world had become darkened. Choshech, the Ophel, means dark and thick darkness. Completely overcome with darkness. And the light of the sun had been completely obstructed. I'm always reminded of this evil guy named Mr. Burns when I was growing up. And he had like this crazy thing, he was going to block the sun. And these psychopath guys like that. Such a thing. So it looks like there was something happening here where Reb Shimon went out and he saw that the world had become totally black and the sun's light was completely obstructed. It sounded like there was on top of the sun's light being obstructed, there was just black and darkness that had descended to the world. You know, if you stop the Zara here and now, you see it's a good idea to stay in the base Medrash. Now there's such a thing, like, he went out one time, and, oh, Yvay, you know. I guess I should have been, you know, staying above Metziah. Omer Leh, the Rebbe Lazar Beret. So he went to his, he was with his son, they were learning Torah, and he said uh, to his son, the Belazar, he said, Tov necheze ma boy kud shabrichu lemeva be'alma. I want you to go and see what does a Kodesh Baruch Hu want to do with the world. It's obviously that something very strange is happening in the world right now. There's a, sign, a heavenly sign when literally the heavenly bodies are being obstructed. By the way, whenever there are heavenly things happening, including eclipses, when the moon, when the sun is red, interesting galactic events, the Gemara says it, they are signs for things. Now, we are not bound exclusively by that because Ein Mazal Yisrael, that we live above the constellations, but we still take them into account. They still have an influence. So the B'shemin said, go find out you know, what Hashem wants to do with the world. Something's going on here. So Ozva Ashkachu Chad Malocha the Damil Tur Ravrava. So he went and he found an angel, a certain angel that looked like a giant mountain. A, a, a megalith, massive mountain. 
the apic talosin shalahoven, the nur mepume. And coming out of this angel's mouth were 30 fire streams of fireballs coming out of this dark mountain angel while the whole world was dark and the sun was obstructed and it didn't look good. Now you see where all the movies get it from. It's all from the Zayar. Everything is here. Except they, they change the details. This is the authentic stuff here. So what happened? Obviously, Reb Shimon, you know, wanted to have a conversation with this angel. Amr le Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon said to the angel, Ma'at boy lemevad. You know, what are you here to do? What, what exactly, you know, is your business here? So Amr le. So the angel told Reb Shimon, I want to destroy the world. Isn't it obvious? Can't you see what's going on here, Reb Shimon? Why? Begin the loy shchichet tlosin zakayin bedara because there are not thirty righteous people in the generation. There are not thirty righteous people in the generation. The world needs to be standing up, yisoid, on the righteous in order for there to be a world that can have a connection. Remember what we spoke about yesterday. There needs to be an interface point. There, there, the yisoid. There's nothing that's holding up the world, and therefore. Excuse me, I'm just coming to be the natural consequence of there not being righteousness in the world, as the world has to be restarted. Because look, this is exactly what God told Avram Avinu when he said, the Avram You will be great when there's 30, but there needs to be 30 tzaddikim holding up the world. The Avram Hayyeh, Ye Begamachet Tlosin. Meaning, when there's 30 tzaddikim like Avram Avinu, then the world will continue. But in this generation of Shimon, there's not 30. And therefore, it, it should be clear that I've come to destroy the world. The world will be reset. Aye, but you might tell me, but didn't God say in the Torah that He's not going to destroy the world again after the flood? God said He won't destroy the world again through water. It doesn't mean that he won't destroy in other ways. So the angel said, if there's not 30, then there needs to be a, a reset. I'm a Reb Shimon. So, you know what, do you think Reb Shimon just accepted that answer? You have to see who our attorney is here. This is such a language, it's hard to even translate. I am telling you, you go back to Kudshabrihu, you giant mountain dark force Mordor fire breathing monstrous angel. You go back to the Lord and you tell him the following The Aimalay, Bar Yochai Shriach Balma. You go tell him that Rabbi Shimon lives in this world. So it appears that. The angel was a bit scared of Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, and he decided to go back to God. So, of course, the angel went back to God. So, the angel said to God, Mara the Alma, Master of the Universe, Galik Kamach Mada Amarli Bar Yochai, Master of the Universe, obviously you know what Bar Yochai said to me because you're God. Amar le kudshabrichu. So God said back to the angel, Zil, go, achrevei alma, Go and destroy the world. I told you to go and destroy the world. V'loi tishkach beba bar yochai. And don't pay attention to bar yochai. You were given a directive. Go do it. Kad osa chazye reb shimin l'malocha. When the Malach came, he saw Reb Shimon. Amar Lai, Reb Shimon said, back to the angel. I can only imagine Reb Shimon, what he was, like, you're back? Do you know what I told you already? <laughs> so look at this. You think Reb Shimon was, you know, 
he didn't, he didn't even wait for the, for the Malach to say anything. Reb Shimon preempts. He sees them, he says, let me tell you something, Malach. Eloi Tezel, if you do not go back to God and tell him again that Bar Yochai lives, Gazarna Allah, I will make a decree against you, fire breathing mountain angel man. Deloite Lishmaya, I will make a decree that you will never be able to go back up to heaven. I'm going to trap you down here. I'm going to trap you where the two angels related to Sir Lazazel, these two angels that have been cast away from heaven and they are chained up in what's called the Har They are in chains bound to this mountain, the mountain of darkness, and they could never go back up to heaven. They're enslaved down here. If you don't get out of my presence right now, I'm going to send you down there where those angels are. You don't want that. And when you go back to God, you tell him the following. If there are not 30 tzaddikim in the world, let there be 20. Lehevi esrin. And look at his proofs. Reb Shimon brings proofs from the Torah. Remember, the Torah is God's Torah. And by the way, you don't think God knows his own Torah? Of course he does. God set this all up. This is all part of the takeaway. That he wants us to save the day. Of course the angels is all an inside job. He wants you and I to save the day. But we have to own it. So look what Rabbi Shimon says back. He says, you tell God. And with confidence. In his Torah. That God himself said that he would save Sadaim if there was 20 righteous. You remember? And even if there's not 20, let there be 10. God said that he would save Sadaim. A minion. The Hachik Siv. Loy Ashfas Bavor Asar, I will not destroy as long as there is ten. A minion at Sadikim. The Ilaysa Sara, and there's not even two. La heavy train. Let there be if there's not even ten, let there be two. The inun anavuburi. And it's me and my son. And he brings a raya, he brings a proof from the verse. The Hachik Siv. Because the verse says, Al pi edem yokum dover. Now the simple meaning of this verse is, for our law students amongst us, is that when you take, when you take Edom, witnesses in the court of law, you need two. Two Edom will create the reality. Al pi edem yokum dover. Two Edom will create, two witnesses will create the reality in court. Now two other Edom can come and falsify them, can zomify them, we call it. We're going to be learning Makkos this year. Yeah? Can they, they, not be related, right? they can't be related. They have to be. So here, it looks like for that type of testimony, they can't. Oh, they can't be related also to the, the, to the plaintiff. Al pishnaim edem yokum dover. The matter is established. What is a dover? What's the matter? Not just the court case. The matter is existence. Reb Shimon says, "Ve'ain davar ela oylem." Al pi shnaim edim, my son and I, we are the testimony that keeps the whole world standing. Dichsiv bedvar Hashem shemaim nasu, and he brings a proof that davar is existence. That through davar Hashem, that davar is all of existence, the heavens and the earth. And then Reb Shimon says, "Ve'i lace train," and if there's not two. Righteous in the world, ha ischad, then there's one. The anahu, and it's me. Dirsiv, like the verse says, Sadiq Yesod Olam. There's our Yesod again. That the Tzadik is the foundation of the world, and like we explained yesterday, 
you could have the fanciest building. But if there's no foundation to the building or the foundation is not strong, everything crumbles. You need to have the tzaddik, one tzaddik holding up the whole world. And this is not somebody, this is not, oh, what a very haughty thing to say. You know, what a, that's a very egotistical thing to say. Rabbi Shimon knew who he was. You should know in Torah thought, humility is not saying I'm nothing. I'm just none, so nothing. We know an egotistical guy says, I'm the man, I'm everything. I'm the man. So what, humility is I'm nothing? No, that's called shiftless. That's called very much being, that's false humility. You know what humility is? You might be surprised. I could hold up the whole world. I am amazing. Baal Hashem. You know where it all comes from? It's all God-given. But I know who I am. I know what my talents are. I know that I'm holding up the whole building. Even though the Yisoyed is very humble. It's just there. It knows it's great, but it knows that it comes from Hashem. And look with the response. At that moment, while Rabbi Shimon was telling that angel to you go back to God, or I'm going to trap you down here in the mountains of Mordor for eternity, a voice came out from heaven and said, Rabbi Shimon, praiseworthy is your portion, Rabbi Shimon Bayachai, the Kudshabrich Gozard, that God says, a decree, la'ela va'at mevatel latata, that God makes decrees up there, but you nullify them down here. Bevada alach itmar ritzoyin yir of yaseh, and that's what it says in the Torah that God does the will of those who have awe for God, because you know what, my friends, God set up the world that He makes certain things in order that we should pray and we should work to nullify those decrees. God put a snake, a serpent Yet Sahara into the world, not that it should just run amok, in order that we should, so to speak, go and slay the dragon. This is like a crazy dragon here. Rabbi Shimon is going to slay that dragon. How did he do it? He didn't use any weapons. He used something much stronger. He used his Chachna. He used Torah. Tyre is called Klei Zayin. Tyre is Hamushim. Yotzu B'nei Yisrael Mitzrayim. We left armed. Our biggest weapon is our tefillah. The Charbi B'kashti. David the Melech says, with my cheriv, with my, my bow and arrow, and with my, with my sword, I'm able to destroy all the enemies. So what's the simple meaning? You know, a bow and arrow, you need to really aim and you need to really be very, very good at getting it there. A sword, though, is sharp wherever it touches. The Shmon Esrei, the tefillahs that Hashem gave us, is like a sword. Just by saying the words, it cuts. They're very powerful. The bow and arrow is like your hisbaidus. You need to be a little bit, know what to do. You need to know how to shoot the arrow. Hashem makes these things that we could cancel it all out. Why does He do that? That creation could be written with us as the co-creators of existence. That Hashem says, I gave existence into your hands. We should be zaycha to the light of Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, to the Yisoyed. This is the Yisoyed. This is what holds the whole world up. The Kedusha Rabbi Shimon. That's Tzadik Yisoyed Oilam. That tzaddik be'emunasa yichye. We should be zayich to this as we move to this week of Yisoyed, going deeper and deeper into the secrets of Yisoyed, which is all about the Zayid, which is all Reb Shimon. And b'siyat the the light of Reb Shimon, all of those destructive angels should once and for all be gone and banished from the world. And we should see the light emerge. The Zayid means light, means brilliance to see tremendous light inside of ourselves, light in our relationships, light with loved ones, light for humanity, guidance for humanity. And with that, we should see the tremendous rebuilding of the Heilige Beis HaMikdash. Amen. 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 Kaltuv.